Cardinal Mark Ouellette, the prefect of the Vatican's Congregation for Bishops, says the church needs more women involved directly in priestly formation in seminaries. In an interview with the Vatican's Women's Magazine, the cardinal says that he believes the experience of collaborating with women on an equal level helps the candidate to envisage his future ministry and how he will respect and collaborate with them. Father Gregory Gaston, rector at the Pontifical Filipino College, joins us now from Rome. Father, thank you for joining us. Hello, Tracy. Thank you. Good to be here with you. Father, I'd like to ask you, uh, what role do you see women having in priestly formation? Well, I think we, uh, we could start with Jesus himself, the high priest, our model, the uh, source of our priesthood. So in Jesus' life, he was with, uh, relating with uh, women in different parts, of course, his own mother, Mary. And in the gospel passages, we see a lot of women there playing vital roles. And also in the history of the church, you know, we see very uh, a lot of women playing uh, important roles. So I think this also has to be present in the formation, in the priestly formation, in the seminaries with this idea that women are not only our, uh, uh, we could say, uh, collaborators, no, but also we can learn a lot from women. Father, do you think that Cardinal Wallet's vision is plausible for the church? Yes, I think Cardinal Wallet you know, well mentioned that the women should play a greater role in the formation of the seminaries. And I think this actually has been starting, of course, in the past, in the olden times when the seminaries started with the Council of Trent in the 1500s, especially 1600s, the seminaries developed. And at that time, well, the culture was a little different no? and they had to try to limit the presence of women in the seminaries. But now with all this uh, the different situations, then we could truly say that women could really uh, give a lot to formation. And we could also add no, that we, we not only learn from them as something additional, but so many things that maybe only women no, could even teach us because of the complementary roles and characteristics of men and women. Well, I'd like to switch gears just a little bit. Today, as you know, is the 39th anniversary of the assassination attempt of John Paul II. What's your memory of this modern-day saint? Yes, actually, I was uh, blessed enough to be ordained by St. Pope John Paul II. That was way back in 1993, and we were a group there in uh, Seville in Spain during the International Eucharistic Congress. And earlier, I also saw him during the World Meeting of Family, uh, I mean the World Youth Day there in Santiago de Compostela. That was my first time to see him. And I would always remember him as a very prayerful man. I would remember him as a, a living saint, we could say, no? because even the way he looks at you, the way he talks, the way he teaches, you know, I really learned a lot from him. I was a seminarian back then in 1988 to 1993, so that was also the height of this. Now, a lot of teachings from the Pope that we learned for in the seminaries. Well, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Uh, before I let you go, Father, I would like to ask you about the coronavirus pandemic. How has it impacted the college and also life in the Philippines? Yes, well, here in Rome, in our college, we were able to implement the strict lockdown. No? So there's practically uh, none of our students have left the college, have gone outside, maybe except for one or two during this past two months. And since Monday, we entered into phase two here in Italy, and we're still maintaining the lockdown. No? So we're all okay. Nobody got sick. No? So <laughs> we're okay. In the Philippines, well, we have to pray a lot also because so uh, we have uh, less facilities even for testing, so we don't really know how many are sick. And we also pray because the doctors, the nurses, the healthcare workers, I think those who got sick or those who, who died even, I think it's because they were overworked, they had no time to rest and so on. So let's pray. Let's continue to pray so that uh, the coronavirus could be controlled there in the Philippines, here in Italy and all over the world. Well, Father, thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Father Gregor Gaston, rector at the Pontifical Filipino College. Thank you again, Father. Thank you so much.